Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. If you would stand with me today in honor of the reading of God's Word, if you don't have a Bible, the words are right up here. You can read along with us. I always read from the King James text. The Apostle Paul writes, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. We've all heard that passage many times. I fear that all too often we hear it quoted very much out of context. So today I think I may have a something interesting, a, a perspective for you, you'll find a little interesting. But I just want to talk to us for a little while today. I can make it. And you're going to understand the little ducky picture in a minute. Amen. <laughs> Would you bow your heads with me just a moment? King Jesus, you're a wonderful God and a wonderful Lord. And we're so grateful, Lord, today that you've allowed us to be partakers of that great revelation and understanding of your identity and your person. Master, in the name of the Lord, I pray, God, that you would loose your anointing in the house of God today like a mighty river. Lord, you have placed this word in my spirit for this very moment, and I believe there is someone in this room there is someone that will be watching by reason of the internet who is desperately going to need to hear what is spoken today. And I pray, God, that every demon from hell that would come against the Word of God would be bound up and broken at this hour, that the Word of our God might have free course. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost ride upon every word that it might touch the ear of the hearer, even as honey touches the tongue of that one who is hungry and water the tongue of that one who is parched. Master, in the name of Jesus, fill us with your word. Fill us with the bread of life. Fill us with that manna from heaven that we might leave the house of God today with sustenance satisfied in our soul. For we ask it, O oh God, and none other than Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Praise God. Amen and amen. You may be seated this afternoon. Praise God. If ever there has been a biblical passage that puts to rest the notion of the prosperity preacher, that God wants you rich and God wants you to have all the best. And it is God's plan and God's design that you only know prosperity and you only know blessing and you only know abundance. Uh -huh. This passage puts that false doctrine to bed. Yes, it does. For the Apostle Paul writes in verse 12, I know both. Uh-huh. How to be abased. Yes, amen. Uh -huh. And I know how to abound. Uh-huh. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh-huh. See, I don't even have to comment on this. If you just let the word of God say what it says. You don't even have to have an IQ in the double digits to understand what's being said. Paul said, listen, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. My Lord, have mercy. So if you think God's plan for your life is every moment of every day your little tummy to be full, and you never to lack, and you never to want. Honey, you are believing a false doctrine. That's right. For Paul said, I am instructed both uh -huh. 
to be full and to be hungry. Amen. Both to abound and to suffer need. Amen. Paul said even for the believer, God himself has filled us in that we're going to experience both sides of that coin. There are going to be times when things will go well. There are going to be times when things don't go so well. Hello now. There are going to be times when things are very difficult and very trying. And surely, if there was any man on the face of planet Earth who understood this, it's the Apostle Paul. Amen. But then Paul continues and says, I can do all things through Christ. Which strengtheneth me. Keeping that in context. Then you understand Paul is saying, listen to me now. He says, I can do the good times. Yes, amen. Through Christ. Amen. Which strengtheneth me. Well, why would I need Christ to strengthen me in the good times? Honey, more people have backslid and left God when things were going good in their lives right. than people have left God when things were going bad. Right. When things are going bad, you tend to hold on to them a little yes, tighter. Amen. When things are going bad, you tend to turn to him and call out his name. But like the Laodicean church, when things are going good, we get the mindset, I don't need God. I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. All of a sudden, God's an afterthought. All of a sudden, the house of God's not so important, Andy, when we've got a job where we can go and make a bunch of money because money is more important than our walk with God. My Lord, have mercy if I tell the truth. We've got a boyfriend, a girlfriend. All of a sudden, it's more important to spend time with our little twink or our little buddy than it is. Ooh, preacher ain't supposed to talk like that. I do. It's more important, brother. We've seen it happen, haven't we? Yes, amen. I'm going to tell you something. You need Christ to make it through the good times. You need Jesus to make it through the good times. Don't you think you just need God to make it through the bad times? You need Him to make it through the good times, too. The good times will deceive you, and they will convince you that necessary. Uh -huh. Oh my Lord have mercy. Amen. Ooh, Lord. Amen. Paul said I can do all things through Christ. What can I do? In context. Keep it in context. He just talked about good times and bad times. Having abundance and having lack. And then he says I, but I can do all of this. What, what's all of this? The good times and the bad times. Hallelujah. I can do the good times through Christ. I can do the bad times through Christ. He's the one that gives me strength to stand and to hold fast to my faith when things are good and it looks like I don't even need God. Amen. But He keeps me focused. Amen. Uh -huh. Yes. We got people in the church world today want to make you believe that you, listen to me now, because I'm going to talk plain, and that's the only way that I'm talk. That you choose what you're going to do. And then Christ will give you the strength to do it. Hello now. Mm -mm. That's not how this relationship with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is designed to work. You don't choose your direction and tell the Lord about it, and He then gives you strength to take your own path and follow your own journey. It's not how it works. I want to share with you a little brief video. I thought, boy, this is a perfect uh, illustration for my message this morning. So I said, I'm going to use this today. I'm going to share this little video. It's only two and a half minutes. I just want you to watch this for a moment. As you can see, Mama Ducky <laughs> has already reached the top stair. And there she stands waiting for her babies. Now only one of them so far has even made it to the second step. And of course, look where he's looking. He's looking behind him instead of ahead of him. 
He's looking at where his little brothers and sisters are instead of where mommy is. My Lord, have mercy. And those poor others are just struggling. They're having a time trying to get up that stair. Bless the little heart. Every direction mommy goes in, they follow. She moves to the left, they move to the left. If she moves to the right, they move to the right. Aha, one of them made it. Every one of the others are still down below. Here we go. Now we got a couple of them figured it out. So you can't be right up against that wall, that stair, and make it. You've got to step back a little and jump. So you have an angle. So you have the ability to catch that curb, as it were. <laughs> Those little big, I feel so bad watching this. My heart just breaks for these little guys. What happened to that little yellow one? Well, it, th that picture is not related to this, Andy. That's a different photo. It's all I could find. <laughs> there you go. Now they're starting to figure it out. You see, you see how when they stand back and they're not so close to the face of the stair, they're able to get enough of an arc so they can catch it. Now look at this. There you go. But now look. There's still two babies down here. Mama's still staying close. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's just one now. Now there's one. She's watching. Why doesn't Mama just leave? She's got the majority of them. Yeah. Whoops. Ah, there you go. go. Now she's got all her babies. I don't think ducks have the ability to count. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. She's got all her babies. Yeah. And she's able to continue her journey because now all her ducks are in a row, if you'll pardon the pun. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you today, what we just looked at is very much an example of our relationship with God. How many of you know today the Word of God declares as many as are led by him. Mm -hmm. They are the sons of God. Yes. Right. Let me tell you, God is not interested in helping you to be successful in your life plan for you. That's right. Yes, amen. Hello now. Amen. No, God wants to be the one doing the leading. Amen. We're supposed to be the ones doing the following, just like these baby ducks. Amen. Uh -huh. And sometimes when God leads us, we get to a place where we're challenged uh -huh. and it is Same not man. easy. Uh -huh. Sometimes we get to a place, in fact, where it is so difficult and so troublesome, we'd really rather that daddy would come back and take us another route. Hello now. Uh -huh. How many have ever said, oh Lord, take me another uh -huh. way? Amen. Uh -huh. I don't want to try to get up these stairs. I don't want to try to climb these stairs. I'd rather you just come. There's bound to be a grade somewhere where we can get to the next level without it being so difficult. There's bound to be a way for me to get where you're trying to get me without me having to do this. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Amen. But God Amen. just waits, Andy, at the top of the stair. <laughs> Amen. He says, you can make it. Amen. You can make it. Uh -huh. You don't even know what you're capable of. Right. You yeah. don't even know what you can do. See, I can do all things. Wait a minute. That doesn't mean I can do everything I set my mind to do. But as long as he's leading, you listen yes. to me now. Uh -huh. Oh, I hope you're hearing me. As long as he's Amen. leading, he will not lead you anywhere that you don't have the ability uh -huh. to do uh -huh. what he's leading you to do. Amen. Amen. Oh, 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 oh. As long as he's leading. Uh -huh. Now the minute you try to get in the driver's seat, don't you sit there and quote Philippians 4. Uh -huh. Amen. The minute you get in the driver's seat, don't you stand there and say, I can do all things through Christ. Bless God. I decided I'm going to marry this person. I decided I'm going to start this business. I decided I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. And God's going to bless it because Philippians 4 says, uh -huh. wrong. Wow. 
let's keep it in context. Amen. Uh -huh. The children of God are those who follow after the leading of God. Amen. Right. God's children are like these little ducklings. They follow the leader. Uh -huh. And even though the direction, the path that he may be leading us may present obstacles uh -huh. and obstructions, Oh, hallelujah. We know God is at the top of the stairs. And he wouldn't have brought us here if we didn't have the ability through Jesus Christ to make it up to the top of the stairs. Hallelujah to God. He that never brought you where you are today if you didn't have it in you to get through and make it to the other side. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And he ain't going anywhere till you get to the top. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you hear me? Yes, uh amen. -huh. He's not going to abandon you. Amen. But he's not going to lift you up either. That's right. <laughs> it's one thing I love. I I was born and raised in the Pentecostal church. I've heard Philippians 4:13 quoted so many times. Make your head spin. Uh huh. And every time I've heard it, not every time, but most times I've heard it quoted, it's always quoted correctly, uh -huh. but then it's interpreted incorrectly. Uh -huh. It's quoted, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Mm -hmm. And then people say, see, God can do anything through me. That's not what it says. That's right, amen. Hello now. I said that is not what it says. Why do you quote it right but apply it wrong? Uh -huh. The Word of God is not saying that God can do something through you. That's not what it said. Right. It said you can do something through God. Amen. Right. The ability, oh my uh -huh. Lord have mercy, is in you. Hallelujah. Yes. It's not about what God can do. It's about what you can yes. do. Because yes. God has placed yes. it in you so that the ability is there. Amen. Uh -huh. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Uh -huh. Because I've got Christ in me, I have the victory. Amen. Because Amen. I have Christ in me, I'm able to conquer. Because I have Christ in me, I'm able to endure. Because I have Christ in me, I'm able to overcome. Oh, devil, let me tell you, I don't have to wait for for me to have the victory yes, because of Christ in me. I am able. I am able. I am able. Yes. And if I'm facing off with you today like David in the valley with Goliath, it's yes. because Amen. I have the ability to win this battle. Amen. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Because God wouldn't have brought me here if it was going to destroy me. That's, That's right. right. Amen. That's right. Amen. God wouldn't have brought me here if it Woo! would be my end. That's Are you right. hearing me? Yes, now? amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, it may be an obstruction, Andy. It may be an annoyance. <laughs> it may not be easy. It may, in fact, be very difficult. Uh -huh. Look at those poor little birds. My goodness, one of them must have been a, an Olympic wannabe because he made it up that first stair pretty quick. But the rest of them, falling all over themselves, jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping. And I mean falling down on their little backs and, you know, rolling around with their little wings trying to get their bodies back upright so they can try it Yet again. Amen. Uh -huh. Oh my God, have mercy. Amen. I can't believe I'm going to get so happy over ducks. <laughs> I didn't see a one of them yeah. <laughs> turn around and walk away. That's, That's right. right. Oh my Lord, have mercy. I didn't see one of those Amen. ducklings. Not a one of them appear to have said, I cannot do this. Uh -huh. That's right. Amen. I may as well just turn around and leave. No, sir. Amen. They said, if mama had
has led me this way. That's right. Oh, oh my God, have amen. mercy. Amen. Then it must be in me That's right. to be amen. able to make these stairs. That's Hallelujah right. to amen. God. We used to sing an old chorus in the church years ago that I love. And we've sung it right here in this church since we've been in Dallas. We are able to go up and take this country yeah. to possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants will be there, our way to hinder. I know my God shall give the victory. Yeah. We are able. You know why? Because yeah. God wouldn't have put us here. Yeah. The Lord wouldn't have called. Oh, hallelujah. God wouldn't have called this church. He wouldn't have called this preacher. He wouldn't have put us here this morning if we were not able. That's right. Amen. Not if he wasn't able. If we weren't able. He's already put in us everything we need to win the war. Hallelujah. Amen. My Lord have mercy. Lord, amen. Amen. Glory to God. That mother duck knew what those baby ducks were capable of. Yes, amen. Because they were her offspring. Uh -huh. They had her genes in her. Amen. And she knew they can jump high enough. Amen. Uh -huh. They can flap them little. Those wings can't help them fly, but they'll help them keep their balance so they can right. get up on that stair. Amen. Man, I know what they're capable. I'm going to tell you something. God looks yes, at us and amen. says, they've got me in them. That's right. Uh, amen. They've got my spirit in them. Amen. I have gifted them with the great amen. Holy Ghost and power. Amen. I know what they're capable of. Yes. You don't need me to come to your rescue. Stand on your feet amen. and punch that devil right square between amen. the eyes. Because you are able. Amen. Uh -huh. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Too many of us sit around like bullied children waiting for mom or dad to come to the rescue. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the father is saying, you can do it. Amen. Amen. You can do it. Yes, amen. Stand up for yourself. That's right. Amen. You are not one that has been called to be bullied. Amen. You are not that's one right. that's been called to be pushed around. Yes. You have been called to be, according to the word of God, Jesus. we are more amen. than conquerors. Amen. Uh-huh. How are we more amen. than conquerors? Through Christ. Through Christ. Yes, amen. Uh -huh. Oh my Lord, have mercy. Isn't that, isn't that the same thing we understand yes, here? Amen. Uh-huh. From, uh, from uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, are we not told that our ability comes through Christ which yes, strengthens amen. me? We are more than conquerors. How? Yes, through Christ. Amen. Uh -huh. That same investment that God made in us at that altar, hallelujah to God, is not only able to help you do, but it's also able to make you more than a conqueror. Yes, amen. Say, well, how amen. can you be more than a conqueror? Well, I'll tell you how you can be more than a conqueror. Look at the example of Israel marching into the land of promise. Uh -huh. There were some people that were so scared of them before they ever got there that they were about ready to lay down and just let them take whatever they wanted to have. Because they'd already heard. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell you something. More than a conqueror. God has put an investment of himself in your life. Yes, so that there are times the enemy won't even give you a fight. Yes, uh -huh. See amen. you're more than a conqueror. Amen. A conqueror has to fight to win. That's but right. more than a conqueror wins. Oh my God yes, have mercy. Amen. Even when he hasn't fought. Hallelujah yes, to God. Amen. Because the enemy yes. surrenders. Before you even get to the walls of the city. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors. My Lord have mercy. Ooh, All the great conquerors God. of the world. The Caesars. The Alexanders. My God. The Constantines. They all had to fight every battle and win it. Right. And they did. They were very successful as men of war. 
But the Word of God tells us we are more right. than conquerors Amen. Amen. through Christ. Amen. Oh, I'm here to tell you folks, if we'll ever get it in our head, if we'll under, uh, ever understand this thing the way we're supposed to understand it, as long as you're walking in the plan and the will of God, yes. you cannot fail. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now listen carefully. That does not mean it's going to be easy. That's right. That's right. Don't kid yourself. Oh, I'm going to tell you, I grew up in this thing. You know how many times I've heard ignoramuses in the church say, well, if God was in it, it wouldn't be that hard. That's right. Yeah. You know how many times I've heard that phrase? Yeah. If God was in it, it would have gone easier than that. Uh -huh. Because after all, that mother duck won't lead her ducklings to stairs. <laughs> She'll always go the path of least resistance, and so will God. Baloney. Amen. Baloney. Amen. Sometimes Paul was doing the will of God, and in the midst of the will of God was a storm. In the midst of the will of God was a shipwreck. In the midst of the will of God was time in prison. Hello now. In the midst of the will of God came turmoil and struggle and strife. Honey, sometimes you need those stairs. Amen. See, those babies, those stairs today weren't all that steep. They weren't even that high. Now, to us as human beings, to those ducks, they were pretty high. Yes, but you know what? The more those babies grow, mm -hmm. the less of an obstacle those stairs will be. That's right. That's right. Oh, listen to me now. Uh -huh. And the tallest stairs they'll be able to manage tomorrow. That's, That's right. right. Amen. That's right. But they Amen. wouldn't even tackle the tallest stairs tomorrow. Until they've conquered the smaller stairs today. That's right. Amen. Oh my God, have mercy. Uh -huh. Sometimes the Lord leads us to a place where there's struggle. Sometimes God leads us to a place where there's an obstacle. He says, you need to do this. I'll be waiting up top, but you need to do this. I've put enough of me in you so that I know you can do this. I don't care if you stand here all day and all night and all day and all night. I know you can do this. That's right. Amen. And over and over again, we struggle to get up that first stair. And we finally get our bearings and we get that first stair. And all of a sudden, we get a little encouraged. If we can do one, we should all be able to do the next one. Uh -huh. And then finally we make that second stair, and there we stand, and there's King Jesus saying, see, I told you. Ooh, amen. I told you you can do it. Amen. I wouldn't have led you this way if it amen. wasn't in you. And do you see what you did? You did it without me. I didn't have to pick you up. Amen. I didn't have to poke you. I didn't have to pull you. I didn't even have to be part. All you had to do, oh, hallelujah to God, was see me at the top of the stair. You'll notice those ducks, every time Mama Duck moved, one side or the other, they all moved. Yes, yeah. amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, sometimes God will move to one side or the other because He knows that that stair actually gets just a little bit easier over here. Mm -hmm. So you can't see that it's not perfectly level. Uh -huh. You can't see that over here, you actually gain about a quarter of an inch <laughs> or a half of an inch. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But Mama moves. And as she moves, every one of those babies, I'm going to tell you, we got so many church folk today, God be moving. And what do they do? They stay right where they're at. They keep trying to do exactly what they've been doing. Uh -huh. Amen. Now, God's not going to come pick you up and help you to do it. That's right. But if you'll watch Him real close, yeah. and if you'll, what does the Word of God say? If we'll walk in the light as He is in the light, hello yes, now. Amen. If we'll stay right where He's at, He just might lead you to a better spot. Amen. So that it'll still be you doing it. <laughs> it'll still be you doing it. Amen. But He knows something you don't know.
I've heard stories about the Red Sea. And they say that where it is believed that Moses led the children of Israel across the Red Sea, you know, during the great exodus, there are scientists and all who say, well, there's this great ridge there that goes across under the water. And, you know, it's possible that this and it's possible that that. And I say, all that is well and good, but only God from heaven could see that ridge from way up there. Because down here, baby, there wasn't nobody even knew it was there. God would move. Mm -hmm. And I'd move with him. Yes, <laughs> amen. Do this. Yes. Do this. Amen. Approach it this way. Go amen. like that. And I would begin to make changes and alterations based on the leading of the Holy Ghost. Yes, now God amen. still wasn't just coming down and doing it for me. That's right. Uh -huh. Amen. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Amen. I want to tell your children today, we need to understand yes, the Word amen. of God and we need to understand it in context. Uh -huh. When God saves us and invests His great Holy Ghost in us, He causes us to become a formidable foe for the works of darkness for the powers of the enemy. He causes us Thank you, Jesus. to become Thank you, Jesus. something that Satan fears. Yes, amen. Amen. I think of the seven sons of Sceva approaching the demoniac and they say, well, in the name of Jesus Christ whom Paul preaches. <laughs> yes, amen. And those old devils look at them and say, now, Jesus, we know. They didn't stop there. That's right. They said, and Paul, we know. Amen. See, when Jesus put his spirit in Paul, yes. that put Paul on our radar too. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. That put Paul on our radar too. Amen. So we don't know just Jesus. We know Paul too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now you, we don't have a clue who you are. <laughs> I want to tell you something today. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. It's not about Jesus doing something through me. That's right. It's about the ability God has given me by reason of His presence in my life. I have become something more. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I'm no longer that weak human frail form that I once was. I now have the very presence and power yes. and authority yes. of God Almighty in my body and in my life. And there's not a devil in hell that can stand before me. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, I want to tell you today, I can make it. Sometimes I look at this work. <laughs> I've been in Dallas for 12 years. I've been in affirming ministry for 21. Sometimes I look at the progress that we appear to have made. And I get discouraged. I used to anyway. I'm not as much as I used to. But you know what? He wouldn't have led me to these stairs. That's right. Unless I could make it to the top. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah to God. Amen, amen. He didn't bring me here so this could be my failing. 
That's right. Hello Amen. now. He didn't bring me. You remember how in the Exodus, every single time the children of Israel got to a place where things got hard. Every time they reached a stair, uh -huh. they turned to Moses and said, Oh, did the Lord bring his hand here to kill us? <laughs> Is this going to be our ending? Is this going to be our distraction? Oh, he brought us out here so we could starve to death. Hello now. <laughs> he brought us out here so we could just dry up and die with dehydration. He brought us out here so we could all stand on the banks of the Red Sea and be butchered by the armies of Pharaoh. So an old song says, He didn't bring us this far to leave us. Amen. He didn't lift us up to let us down. Amen. Hallelujah to God. No, sir. He has put an ability and a capability and a power in you that, honey, if you'll just learn to walk in obedience to His will and His leading, you will find that every obstacle you come upon, you will be able to to conquer it. Amen. If you cannot conquer it, you might ask God, Lord, am I outside of your will? Yes, uh -huh. amen. Uh -huh. I love when people, I'm trying to bring it to a close, but I'm having the devil of a time. <laughs> I love when people come to me and they've got a relationship that is so bad. They should have never been in it to begin with. It was the wrong person from the word go. Amen. Now they're trying desperately to make it work and they want the pastor to step in and perform miracles. Uh, Ain't going to happen. Right. Amen. It's not going to happen. Honey, let me tell you, God don't take something that's not part of His will. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. Amen. My Lord, have mercy. Amen. And then tweak it just to make you happy. Right. That's right. Amen. My Lord, have mercy, folks. I've learned that lesson the hard way. Let me tell you. Amen. I've learned that, and I, you know, I don't say that with glee, but it's the truth. Amen. I'm going to tell you, when you let God do His will, you know, Tommy and I have been together 12, almost 13 years. Am I going to tell you it's easy? No, it's not. No relationship's easy. But am I going to, am I going to tell you today, for somebody that's had relationships the way I've had relationships, it's a whole lot easier and it's a whole lot better. Amen. And it works a whole lot more like it's supposed to. Hello Amen. now. Amen. You see, when you let God put things together, again, it won't be easy. Yes, amen. But it'll work. Amen. You got, you know, I see people on the internet. One lady, bless her heart, she posted a message, I think, to every group we have on Facebook. Every page we've got talking about her partner and you know, and oh, she needs prayer and blah 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 blah. And I read all these messages, and you know what I read? By the time I saw the same message on about the fifteenth different site, I was reading. She didn't write this, but I was reading this. I should have never gotten into this mess to begin with, and now I'm trying to make something work. Yeah, amen. That isn't even for me. Mm-hmm. Hello now. Amen. Yes, amen. Me too. Oh, but I'm afraid I won't be by myself. Yeah. Sweetheart, being by yourself may be the best thing ever happened to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, we got too many people in our world, straight, gay, cross-eyed, and blind, that are trying to be in relationships who are not yet ready for a relationship. Yes. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. Yep. Listen, you got to get yourself to a place in your life where you're even ready to have a relationship. Yes, amen. Uh -huh. I spent the majority of my adult life acting like a 15-year-old when it comes to dating and relationships. I really did. I had so many stupid notions in my head and so many foolish things going on in my, my little immature brain. It took me a long time to outgrow some of that foolishness. Till I was finally in a place, brother, where I could have a healthy relationship. Uh -huh. People seem to think that I have no idea why in the world God's putting this in my spirit, but God's putting it in my spirit, so I'm going to share it. Amen. Anybody who tell you, I don't talk and preach about relationships a whole lot, but for some reason it's in me, so I'm going to yeah. share it. Okay. But I'm going to tell you, folks, 
people act like, you know, just because you can have a baby, uh -huh. you're qualified to be a parent. Just because you can buy a marriage license, you're qualified to be married. Wrong. Amen. Wrong. Amen. Any Tom, Dick, and Harry, you put any male and female together, they can produce a baby. You put any male and female together so far, and they can go to a city hall and buy a marriage license. But I'm going to tell you, we wouldn't have the divorce rate in this country and in our world that we have today if all it took to be successful was to have a yoo-hoo and a yahoo. <laughs> Hello now. Uh -huh. Amen. One of the best things that ever happened to me, I went through a two-year relationship situation and it was not pretty. I cared very much about the person. You, many of you probably been in the same shoes that I'm talking about now. I cared very much about that person and that person couldn't have cared two bits about me. But I was convenient. I helped, you know, pay the rent. I helped, you know, keep a roof over somebody's head and kept the bills paid. And so, you know, I, I was convenient for a couple of years and then it was wadded up like trash and thrown away. Well, after that experience, took me a long time. After that experience, I came out of that so wounded and so bruised that I finally woke up and said, no more of this. Amen. Finally. took me a long time to get there. I said, no more of this. And I proceeded to make my mind up mm -hmm. that I would not ever move in with anybody until I knew that 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 that person and I had what it was going to take to spend the rest of our lives together. Because that's really what I wanted. I, I wasn't looking for a two-year, a three-year, a four-year, an eight-year hookup. I was looking for a life together. Amen. I said, I'm not doing this anymore. And I finally began to value myself. That's right. Amen. I finally began to say, you know what? I deserve better than some of this foolishness that I've put up with over the years. I don't have to settle for just anybody because I'm afraid of being alone. Amen. No, I learned you can be miserable with somebody. Honey, if I'm going to be miserable with somebody, I'd rather be miserable by myself. Amen. Right. Amen. There is nothing makes you feel worse than when you're with somebody which is supposed to make you feel better. Hello now. And instead, you're feeling every bit as bad as you would feel if you were on your own. Amen. Who wants that? I don't. And I said never again. And I begin in my dating life, I begin to approach things very differently. And I would date people. I had people get so mad at me because they wanted to progress, you know, to the next level, living together, whatever, you know. And I'd say, uh-uh. No. And then if I saw something come along, and Andy, if I realized... No, I, I see a problem here, and I guarantee you that it's going to be a deal breaker. Then I valued myself enough to walk away from a bad situation. Yes, amen. Because I'm not going to just put up with one just so I can have somebody. Right, amen. And I got to the place, oh, I had a lot of people get mad at me. See, you're not supposed to, let me tell you, people will accuse you of every evil thing. When you finally stand up for yourself and stand for yourself. All right. that, oh, you're just a user. You're just this. You're just that. No, that isn't what I was. Not at all. But I was not going to settle for something that I knew was going to be a problem from the get-go just so I could have somebody. Right. Amen. And I hate to say it, but I can understand why they were so crazy about me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I'm a pretty good catch. I'll tell you, it doesn't hurt you to get to the place where you think a little bit like that. Amen. Where you value yourself. Where you think. The Bible tells us, let not a man think more highly of himself than he ought. Right. That doesn't mean you cannot think highly of yourself. Right. Amen. It means don't get stupid about it. Amen. <laughs> 
I want to tell you today, folks, I can make it. I don't care what obstacle stands before me. I don't care what obstruction the enemy has placed in my path. If God has led me this way, then He knows I can make it. He would not have led me this way if I couldn't. The Word of God said there is no temptation overtaking you, but such as is common to man. And with that temptation, God will make a way of escape. What does it mean? If the Word of God says God will not put anything on us that is greater than we're capable of bearing. Is that not That's what the Scripture says? Do you know what that means? That means if you'll follow His lead, mm -hmm. He will never lead you anywhere mm -hmm. that is above and beyond your ability level. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that good news this morning? Yes. Or this afternoon? Yes. Amen. Would you give the Lord a round of praise? Yes. Amen. Stand with me if you would.